Howdy, buckaroos. It's your old pal Gabby Hayes coming at you with another one of them rip-roaring yarns. <laughs> You're darn tootin'. Yes, sir -y Bob. Hey, Ziggy, I ever tell you the story about my old uncle, Samson Hayes? You know, Gabby, was he strong? Strong, strongest man the world has ever known, human or otherwise. Why, he was so strong, he could take a hold of himself just like that, hold himself right out straight in the air. Now, you know you've got to be strong to do that, don't you? Sure, mm, Gabby. You're darn tootin' you. Well, sir, one time out in California, they was having a contest to see who the strongest man was. It kind of narrowed down to three fellers. Well, first fella, he got up, he reached out, he picked up a rock, oh, it must have weighed about, I'd say, 40 tons. Throwed it 80 miles. Yeah. Next fella, he got up, and he picked up a rock, weighed 226 tons. He throwed it 200 miles. Yeah. Then it was my uncle's turn. Ha! He just reached out like that and got himself a handful of mountains, reached out here and got another handful of mountains. He whirled them around his head, oh, 786 and a half times, and he let them go. And they went sailing clear and out of sight. They went going and going. Finally, they come down right in the middle of the Pacific Ocean for plunk. And you want to know something, Dicky? They're right there to this very day. Yes, sir. Folks call them the Hawaiian Islands. Gee, Gabby, I find that pretty hard to believe. Well, I don't care whether you believe it or not. It's the truth. Shucks. Never told a lie in my whole life. Nobody but... Oh, say, I almost forgot. Got a story to tell you, haven't I? It's all about a couple of fellers who are helping a young gal get some horses ready to ship to the army. Well, sir, everything was going along fine. And then something happened. Well, we've got the herd rounded up. You men from down the river to the fork and then head them off into Lost Canyon. Beautiful bunch of horses, Tucson. We're sure lucky there ain't no brands on them. Well, we could pass them off across the border and make ourselves plenty of money. Now, don't go getting any ideas, Trigger. You know Marino's running this outfit. Well, I'm heading back to the ranch. Gotta have an alibi when the horses show up missing. I get you. Nothing like home sweet home, eh? Jenny, that was a well-planned job. The boys and I followed the tracks as far as we could and lost them at the river. Those horses were just like money in the bank. They represented a generation of care and breeding. And now for what? Only to have the whole herd stolen by a band of outlaws from that lawless hole of Dow City. Now, wait a minute. We ain't got any proof that it was them hombres that's responsible for this. Well, we know this much. The lawless hole, and, and no good man hang out where there's no law. You're right there, but there's nothing we can do about it unless the citizens band together and elect a peace officer. Well, there's one thing I can do about it. When those army men get here tomorrow, I'm going to appeal to them for help. I'm going to start an investigation of that town and know the reason why. I've decided to stick around a little while longer. So much is happening, you might be needed. Thanks a lot. I tell you, Dickie, that young lady was fighting mad. And she wasn't fixing to let them outlaws run out with her horses, mother. Well, what did she do, Daddy? <laughs> did she get the sheriff? Oh, or did simmer she get the army? down. Simmer down, will you? Simmer down. Yeah, the old man becomes sheriff, all right. What about the army? 
That's something else again. There's their camp. They're in a perfect spot for it. up as we'd planned, I went out on the trail hoping to meet up with them. When I found their last camp, I notified Captain Rogers here. There wasn't a man on the whole detachment that escaped, sir. No evidence of any kind. Fire completely destroyed the whole camp. Do you suppose the Apache Indians in that vicinity staged a war of their own? Definitely not. These raiders were white men. Indians wouldn't have stopped to take the gold that you were sending for the Morgan horses. There wasn't a sign of it in the ashes. I'm convinced the whole motive was out and out robbery. In all likelihood, it was some of those fugitives who hide out in and around Dow City. Shall I place the town under martial law, uh, Major, and uh, place some of our troops there? No. In the first place, we can't spare them in. The second open investigation will put them in a scatter like quail. We would be defeated before we could even get started. But, my dear Mellon, it's not. <laughs> Morgan girl is going through her plans, all right. She's already got the vote of every citizen in this whole town to make Tennessee the constable. So what? She hasn't got Clem here or me to back her up. Everybody knows we run this town. And she's determined there's going to be an investigation. She's telling everybody it's starting right here at the Dow Saloon. Hey, Bob. We just learned something you should know. Now, don't tell me that gal's got you scared, too. No, it ain't that. We just learned that Whistling Sam got wind of the job you pulled and is heading this way. Who's Whistling Sam? Well, everybody's heard of him. He's known as the toughest gunslinger in this whole territory. They say he's got a bad temper. A sense of humor, too. They say he likes to shoot a man in his Adam's apple just to see his head wobble before he hits the ground. What does he look like? I've heard he wasn't too bad looking. But always with blood in his eye. And he has a mania for whistling. Always whistling. Especially just before he gets ready to murder somebody. It's him, all right. Always rides a black horse. Why, that's the hombre who's been posing as the inspector out at the Morgan Ranch. Yeah, pretty smart operator. Probably figuring on making himself a nice haul of horses when we beat him to it. Well, what do we do about it? Take him into the gang. Make him a deal to string along with us. It's a good idea, Marina. It's better to have him for us than against us. Well, count me out of this.
What's it going to be, man? Give me a great, big, long, tall snort. What brand? Make it ice water. That goes for me, too. You know, Eddie, when you're thirsty, there's nothing in the world like it. Huh? To you. To me. You're a stranger in these parts, aren't you? Daughter? Sort of. From the looks of things, we're going to like it around here. Yahoo! No okay. Where are you from? Down around the border. Any objections? No, on the contrary. We heard you were heading this way. We've been kind of expecting you, Sam. Sam? The name's Eddie. Eddie Dean. Yeah, that's what it may be now. But let you and I quit fooling each other. We all know you're whistling, Sam. And I'm perfectly willing to cut you in with the boys. We try to get along together here. There's plenty of picking for everybody. But we don't want any trouble. Come on over, meet the boys. My, you know, keep it sure that no good pool cat whistling Sam. Is that bad? It is if he shows up. He won't. He's in the pen. I heard he has passed got out, didn't he? Well, at any rate, he's not around here. We may as well play ball with him. We might learn something. Not me. I ain't a hankin' for no learning that bad. Come on. We ain't got nothing to lose. Maybe you haven't, but I have. Well, there you be. Our friend Eddie being asked to join the outlaws because they think he's whistling Sam. I reckon he could have trapped him any time he wanted, but something happened. The real whistling Sam showed up. Ugh. I brought you up here to tell you the hombre we thought was whistling Sam ain't him at all. No? How'd you find that out? Because Sam just arrived. Tucson, I want you to meet Sam Wade, generally known as Whistling Ham. That's right. I just told the boss here what a mistake he made. That Dean's nothing but a Bronx buster. Funny thing about it. The way he's always snooping around and making trouble. Seems he kind of works on the side of the law. The investigation's already sent me to the pen part. In that case, I think we should clear out of here. Now, wait a minute. If we run, that's the same as signing a confession. He's got nothing on us. And that's what you think. He found that army saddlebag in my bunk. I told you to burn that up. I know you did, but he found it before I had a chance. Come on, let's clear out of here because it's all in the pen. But I own the freight line in this saloon. I can't afford to run. And give me my share of that army money. I'm ready to make myself scared. I'll do nothing of the kind. You got yourself into this jam, you can get yourself out of it. And as far as your cut of the money, you don't get that until your job's finished. And your job ain't finished until you run that law dog out of this town. That's the job for you, Sam.
Take it easy, Tennessee. I'll get you to a doctor. No use. I made that pretty hard. Who did it? Whistling. Sam. But it was Marino. Who? Who? Well, Diggy, I reckon them outlaws went just a little mite too far. What happened then, Gabby? Well, a young friend saddled up and went for a showdown. Gun, Sam. What kind of a game is this? We're on to you, Dean, and we're arresting you. It's you who's going outside, but you're going without Sam, and you're going feet first. You'll never get away with it. That's what you think. There's no one to stop us. And as far as the law is concerned, it's on our side now. Kensington here has just been made our new constable. And according to your own testimony, you were the last person with Tennessee Todd before he was killed. And according to the coroner's inquest, you're the one who murdered him. You're pretty smart, Marino. Got all the answers. Now, do you mind telling me how you figured to work it? No, not at all. You're going to try to make a getaway, and we're going to have to put a bullet through you to stop you. That goes for your pal, too. Now, start walking to the door. One time, your timing was all wrong. You got those guns. the last place they think to look for it. How come? Look. Those are the long miss and Morgan horses. How'd they get there? I helped put them there. Are you out of your head or you are asking for a bunk in the hoose gal? Did you ever hear of a reform drunkard? All the way or nothing. I can get you leniency for this confession, but I can't promise to get you completely out of it. Well, that's all right with me. Oh, another thing. Uh, would you mind telling us just why the sudden change of heart? Oh, I don't know. Guess I got tired of Marino holding that wanted sign over my head. Or maybe it's what they did to poor old Tennessee. Then again, it might have been that prayer that you said at his grave. Maybe it is just at the right time. We've got to get those horses out of here. We never get through the pass. That's where Marino's men will be waiting for us. Then we'll drive them through town. 
We'll need some help when we hit the flats. I'll go back to the ranch and get the boys to help us out. You two stay here and watch that pass. Uh, see that nobody gets through. The rest here, come with me. Dickie, did you like it? I sure did, Gabby. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, yeah. there was a lot of good shots in that one, huh, Gabby? Yeah, you know, that young fella kind of reminded me of an old uncle of mine. Sure shot Hayes he was known as. Best shot in the whole United States. And Texas. This story I'm going to tell you about happened a long while ago. One time he was out shooting buffalo and he run out of bullets. Had a lot of powder, but no bullets at all. He was tired, you know, and he sat down, leaned up against a tree like this, went sound asleep. All of a sudden, he woke up. He heard a war whoop, you know. And there coming straight at him was 50 wild Indians, Tommy hockeys in their hands. They were going to scalp him, sure. Well, sir, he was so scared, he started to sweat. Great big balls of sweat just like that formed all over his forehead. Well, I'm telling you, they was going to get him. Well, sir, they kept coming closer and closer. And then he, he started to get cold. He got so scared. You know, these great big balls of sweat, they froze just as hard as a piece of steel. Give my uncle an idea. He was a hay, smart, you know. So he just took some powder, put it down in his gun like that, and rammed her down, reached up and scooped them great big frozen balls of sweat off, put them in the gun, rammed them down, wham! Killed every darn one of them Indians with one shot. All 50 of them. Yes, sir. Mm. Well, sir, they were laid all over the ground, you know. He, he went out there and he looked them all over and they wasn't a mark on them. You see, them frozen balls of sweat, they traveled so fast they melted. 
every one of them engines was drowned. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Yes, about all for day, buckaroos. See you next week with another rip roar and yarn. Hey, you're darn Yes, sir, Bob. <laughs>